Hello, my name is Zane Allen, uh, current Veeam Vanguard, and what I want to walk through here is a preview of what V13 and the all Linux-based Veeam Backup and Replication console uh, experience uh, will look like. And this is definitely a tech preview, kind of an alpha code, uh, but I wanted to share that with you uh, as I have access. So as a Veeam Vanguard, they, they do give us some of these previews a little ahead of time so that we can take a look at them, give us feedback. And, and let the world know kind of what's coming out. I see here, OVA file, right? Very different experience. We're going to put that in as the Veeam console, actually the Veeam backup server. Here's a look at that in my vSphere environment. I went ahead and did this as a VM. Obviously, it's OVA. Kind of run top there, and you can see all the code that's been ported over, right, to run all of the server services, right, out of Linux, right? No, no Windows needed. There is a client, so kind of, you know, same experience as you used to now if you're a Veeam Backup Replication user. Um, but when we, and I have that installed here on in a Windows box, definitely very similar to logging into the specified, you know, specific backup server, kind of a different look if you're used to this. I'll add those set credentials that are in this tech preview. And boom, we're logged in and we'll be met with that splash screen that indicates that this is Veeam Backup and Replication 13, right? This is the target that they have for this new feature and very early build, of course, but I'm going to take a look at it here now. So we're met with a very kind of similar experience, but definitely a different look if you're used to VBR, right? It's kind of a different uh, design all around. One of the newest features that I'm pretty excited about, and I'd be in, curious what you think, is this new dark green, right? So dark mode now for VBR. I'm not sure that my other, all my fellow vanguards uh, feel the same, but I like it. So I'm definitely going to keep that kind of, kind of setting as I go forward here. Very similar, you know, look, right? Just kind of our look and feel, at least operation. You have your inventory at proxies, though that proxy now is that default Linux console, right? Or that Linux server now. Uh, backup repositories um, where you can add them all as well. But again, some different experience here. That is a default backup repository picks up the volume on the Linux server, right? That's very different than what happened before since Veeam relied on Windows. Your default repository would always default to the largest disk on the Windows box. But again, now it's doing on that Linux, right? Uh, you can do external repos there. Storage infrastructure, though it doesn't seem to be working with this build. Still supported. Right, you can have files, you have the analytics tab, so eventually you can tie this to Veeam 1. I will be reviewing kind of the V13 Veeam 1, not attached to this, but in a, in a later video, so look forward to that. Malware detection, right, everything. Backup jobs, run them, set them up, right? Very very similar, just, just kind of a different look. But in addition, something has been asked for for a very long time. Not only is there a Windows client, but there's now an HTTPS client. That's right. You can hit this over a web browser from anywhere and definitely a different look and feel. Kind of very similar to what they've done in the win, uh, the you know Azure AWS piece um, where you are kind of met with this cool overview, right? So right there from your Veeam console, you hit it with the, the web console. You can get stats on platform health, workload protection, right? Events. Your job status that you kind of filter by failed and warnings and successful, right? You can just that top level information right here in the VBR console, you know, over the web browser. So pretty cool. I think, you know, great for admins in the morning, you know, see a different view, see what's working, what isn't working, what jobs may have had issues so that you can then, you know, focus and dive into those. You have all of your history at a, at a, at a click here, you know, what's, what's happened. And just, you know, a lot of information at your fingertips. Maybe you don't have to go past this. And you can do some management from here, right? This is a console, so I can add repositories, right? These are all the repositories you saw in the fat client. I can add proxies, right? There's that default Linux proxy, but I can pick and choose, add new ones, pick different transport modes, you know, everything you could do with the fat client now in a, in a web client. That's what a new, new repository would look like. Here's the managed servers, right? I've already added all these, but I could add additional Windows servers, additional Linux servers, right? This additional vCenters or 
set it up here from scratch. And then there's those backup jobs that we've set in the console. These are the actual backups. Backup jobs are here. So you can, you know, add new ones, start and stop jobs as they go, right? Really just do your management again, as you would do in the Windows client, all from this web client. So pretty, pretty slick, easy to use. Like I said, a lot more efficient for, you know, backup admins and the like to see where their backups are at, the successes, the fails, manage those jobs, run them, you know, all of those things. Obviously there's more features kind of in the Windows client maybe, but you know, all the simple operations you need to do are right here at your fingertips. Under backups is where you'll be able to do the restores. So you can also, you know, make that happen. Kind of very simple uh, in this tech preview. So entire VM, instant recovery, but you click those options and, you know, very similar choices that you would have had if you're, you know, past experience with the Windows clients. So I can pick restore points. And what's kind of neat is it goes across multiple backup jobs. These backup jobs have the same VM in them. So I can actually see restore points for that VM more so than just from the backup job. So I think that's pretty slick. You can pick, you know, restore to new location, pick your proxy, look at host. So you can restore to the same host or, you know, in this case, a different host. You can see right in the vSphere the same. So I'm going to pick that cluster, use resource pools, right? Folders and record, re restore directly where I want to into that vSphere environment. And so there's the folder option. I can pick a folder that's pre-existing and restore directly that VM directly into there. Obviously I have the read write, redirect write cache. If you want to use that from an instant VM recovery, type the reasons, right? It's all there, right? It's just all one wizard. I'm making it very easy to choose, you know, the options I need to for a full VM restore or an instant VM recovery. You can even copy the uh, configuration off to the clipboard. You know, all those same options you have, target on VM, connect to VM network. I'm going to go ahead and say, don't connect to VM network because I'm just going to test in that restore. And that is really it. A nice first look at what a all Linux uh, VBR uh, environment can look like with a HTTPS console, right? More to come on this. Again, this is a tech preview, uh, but very interested in any comments you might have out there, any feedback. You know, send them my way. Let us know how, what you think. Thank you for watching.